Hey guys, Dark Barbarian here. Today we're making a really powerful Town Hall 7 hybrid base and I'm sure you are going to love it. We are also going to do a complete breakdown of this base where you'll learn about each and every placement of the base, in the base analysis part of the video. So make sure you don't forget to watch that. But before that, I would like to introduce you to today's sponsor Mech Arena. Mech Arena is a free-to-play 5v5 real-time shooter game available for both Android and iOS. Here you can enjoy fast-paced gameplay with tons of epic mechs. You can fight your enemies to unlock new mechs, weapons and upgrades like giant laser beams and missile barrages. You can customize your mechs with a variety of paint jobs to add your own touch to your mechs. My favorite part of the game is the multiplayer aspect of the game cause I really enjoy playing multiplayer games with my friends and Mech Arena really nails it with their different multiplayer modes, and awesome looking maps to keep you engaged in the game. With daily and weekly events happening all the time, there's always something new in Mech Arena, like the in-game charity event that is running right now until December 15th where Mech Arena will raise $100,000 for charity for destroying 1 billion mechs in-game. Here players can earn in-game rewards, a chance to win a whole box of limited edition Mech Arena merch, and contribute to the Able Gamers charity. That's right. By playing Mech Arena you'll be actually indirectly donating to the charity, so enjoying a fun multiplayer game with friends while contributing to a charity? I'll take that. Also if you're good enough you can win a spot to compete in the championship title on December 16th, where the 5 winners will get to pilot a real life mech. Damn. You can download the game using the QR code in the top right, or the link in the description and if you use that QR code or link, you'll get 50,000 credits, 3 gold crates and an exclusive mechs are here event skin. So be sure to download Mech Arena to make some mayhem for a great cause using the link in the description. And if you're quick, you can add me as a friend and we can play some matches together, so I'll see you in game, thank you Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. For now, I'll let the speed build play see you in the base analysis.
Let's do the base analysis. Let's talk about the first and the main feature of this base, wall compartments. In this base we have so many compartments. There are compartments literally everywhere. This helps us in slowing down opponent's troops, which ultimately leads to time fail or opponent run out of troops. Most of the time opponent's troops like giants are usually found stuck on walls while our defenses are targeting them. Mortars are primarily directed at the base's outer compartments and outer region to protect us from spam attacks like mass goblins, g-barch and barch but they don't just protect the base's outer buildings. They're positioned in such a way that they pretty much cover the entire base. Wizard towers are located at a distance from each other in well-protected spot in the center of the base, so that they can offer air splash damage coverage to the most important buildings of the base like air defenses, dark elixir storage, town hall and other storages. The archer towers in this base, are placed in all four corners arranged in such a way that their range covers the whole base, which means the base is well secured against air attacks from all the sides. Let's talk about air defenses, to avoid being taken down by lightning spells in a group, air defenses are separated into multiple compartments. They are put in compartments near the base's core, and they are nicely coupled with air sweeper, resulting in increased defense against air attacks such as mass loons and mass dragons. Cannons are appropriately positioned to offer a nice balance to the base, so overall the defenses are evenly spread throughout the base. When it comes to storages, they are spread evenly throughout multiple compartments. Most rookie base designers make the mistake of placing all storages in the center and defenses on the outer compartments. As a result, once the attacker has penetrated the compartment of defenses, they have access to all of the loot. Because the storages are in different compartments in this base, the attacker will have to take out the entire base in order to acquire all of the loot. Also remember to never put the same type of storages on the same side of the base. For example, if we put both gold storages on this side of the base, the attacker will be able to grab almost all of your gold merely by destroying this portion of the base. As a result, in order to avoid this, we alternate their placement, much like this base. Our dark elixir storage is securely protected in the base's core compartment, which is quite difficult to gain access to, therefore our dark elixir will be safe in this base. Now coming to the placement of the traps, I've observed so many attacks on this base, and found some spots where most opponents are likely to drop their troops on, and the pathings where troops are most likely to walk through, and according to that I've placed these traps on those spots. The giant bombs and teslas are placed next to each other outside the base, let me tell you the reason for that, there are two reasons, first, when opponent drops their giants, they go for the easiest defense they can get to since Tesla is also a defense and is placed outside. While all the other defenses are placed inside, those Teslas will attract opponent's giants towards themselves. Once those giants reach the Teslas they will most probably get in the range of giant's bombs, and those giant bombs will deal huge damage to the giants forcing the opponent to use an early heal spell. The second reason, most people at Town Hall 7 don't know how to funnel their troops into the base properly. So what happens is that their giants go for the defense buildings inside the base but the supporting troops like wizards move around the peripheral of the base. So I decided we should take advantage of that, so I placed these giant bombs outside, so those swarms of wizards that move around the peripheral of the base can be taken out all at once. When it comes to the outer buildings, I've placed them in an alternative style to avoid placing the same type of collectors close together. I've noticed that most people don't think about it when placing those outer buildings, so they end up putting the same type of collectors all together. These collectors become an easy target for attackers when placed together, so it's important to spread them out to make it harder for them to be taken out. And that's it for the base analysis. Even if the base is strong enough, having defensive troops in your clan castle can help a lot, as defensive clan castle troops can help you waste opponents' troops in time. Having Valkyrie for normal defenses and Dragon for war defense is ideal, but if your clan can't donate you those, anything would work. Now, go straight to the description, where I've included a copy link for this base so that you can easily copy it.
That's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.